So I'm sure everybody in the audience today knows somebody with cancer, has a family member or a friend afflicted with cancer. The scary part is we all have cancerous cells or precancerous cells in our body right now. The good thing is that our immune system tends to clear these cells and most people do not have cancer. The cancer can adapt and ultimately these cells can start to grow uncontrolled and spread throughout your body. And as you know, millions of people worldwide are afflicted with this problem. The good news is scientists have figured out strategies to combat this. A whole new field of therapy has emerged called cancer immunotherapy, where we can stimulate the immune system to fight the cancer for you. Now, these types of treatments are very exciting. First of all, they're less toxic. We're not giving you toxic chemicals that are trying to destroy cancer. We're trying to stimulate your immune system. They don't have the same kind of toxicity issues. Secondly, if they find the cancer, they will fight that cancer for the rest of your life. We are seeing now cures in patients who have very advanced cancer that are quite durable. And since these treatments are so effective, the health authorities, the FDA and others, have accelerated approval process to try to get these to the market as quickly as possible so we can help the people that need them. The clear leader in this field is Bristol-Myers Squibb. They have developed, and I worked for them for seven years, and helped develop two key drugs in this area. These drugs are doing phenomenally well and are producing cures in anywhere from 15 to 30% of certain tumor types. Okay? This market is projected now by most analysts to be 80 to $100 billion annually. So as you can imagine, all the other companies are following up in this space, trying to come out with therapies. Merck recently launched a product. AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Roche are all trying to catch up in this area. This is exactly the opportunity that Salvarex is trying to capture on. We are looking to develop complementary products to be an external source of innovation of drugs in this space that these big companies are gonna come and hopefully acquire from us once we get human data. So here's the opportunity, cancer immunotherapy. A little bit on my team. So as I said, I worked at Bristol Myers for seven years, helped bring these two blockbuster drugs to market. Prior to that, I had an academic career. I worked in the lab with someone who won the Nobel Prize. My chief science officer, Dr. Kramer, former Harvard professor, worked at the National Cancer Institute. Between the two of us, we've tested at least 60 different drugs, including five drugs that have made it to the market and are making an impact on millions of lives. In addition to our scientific and drug development experience, we also have business experience. I went back to school, got my business degree, and I've been working at big pharma and biotech companies to help set up these licensing and acquisition deals. In fact, my last two years at Bristol-Myers, I screened hundreds of companies like Salvarex to try to help the company decide which companies uh, to buy. In fact, since starting Salvarex, we've met with all these major companies and have started to open a dialogue on setting up these type of licensing deals. So we formed Salvarex as an entrepreneurial way to develop new drugs in this space. We set up a somewhat unique structure, okay? We have a parent company that holds the capital, the, the people, and helps to design the strategy for these type of products. That parent company is supported by our large network of very senior pharma and, exec and biotech executives that we can call on to help due diligence, to consult, to step in in an operating role for these companies. I'm gonna tell you about our first two companies that we've invested in, IOX Therapeutics and Intensity. You may have heard Lou Bender uh, talk a little bit earlier. But the beauty of this model is we can continue to add more companies and more products under this umbrella company and if one of those is successful in striking a license deal or an acquisition, we would figure out a way to return that capital to our shareholders. And with the products that we're looking at, we're hoping to have some sort of exit in the next two to three years of these products. So this is a somewhat unique model for AIM. The first company that we've uh, launched is a local company here in the UK. It's based on a collaboration between Oxford University and the Ludwig Institute, which is a large nonprofit organization that supported these products. 20 years of research by the head of immunology at Oxford generated a series of compounds. He partnered with Ludwig 
who figured out how to manufacture these drugs and spoke to the health authorities and started the path towards the clinic. We came in about a year ago, started collaborating with them on, a, on doing new experiments, generated some exciting data with them, and then ultimately invested in July to acquire 60% of IOX. And one of our contingencies was the cost of drug development is high. We wanted to get um, other people to come in and help fund this, and we put together two very important collaboration deals. The first one is with the University of Oxford themselves, who agreed to fund a very large phase one, phase two trial that will establish the safety and the efficacy of their lead compound. That would have cost the company roughly seven million. We just announced two days ago a grant from the European Commission to fund a second product of IOX, which again funds all the manufacturing efforts, including the human trials. So between these two deals, we brought in roughly $20 million of external funding that's non-dilutive to the organization and takes out a lot of the cost needed to take this project forward. So with a small investment from Salvarex, we get two products fully funded to a point where we think we will be able to have, if the data supports, very good discussions on partnering and licensing of these assets. So this was the main company that we launched Salvarex with. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we announced yesterday an investment in intensity therapeutics. Lou is right here, the CEO of that company. He's an engineer that designed a very interesting novel way to reformulate drugs so that they can be injected directly in the tumor. If you inject drugs directly into the tumor, you're less likely to get the bad side effects that most cancer treatments are, are associated with. And if you can kill the tumor effectively, and we've shown this in animals, you will stimulate the immune system. Once the immune system kicks in, it completely clears the tumor. It will clear other tumors that are not injected. And at least in our animal models, those animals are completely cured. They can never get cancer again for their entire life. So this is a very promising approach. Again, there's a strong tie to academic groups. This company's partnered with the National Cancer Institute. Their labs are doing a lot of the testing for us that's supported by government funding. And the important thing that's very, that Lou mentioned earlier is that this drug is almost ready for the clinic. We're hoping to get it into human testing before the end of the year. So you can see when you put these two companies together what this company is starting to look like. We have a very broad portfolio of products. These are being tested in many of the major kill cancer killer indications. Um, a big part of the, the expense of developing these drugs is covered by collaborative funding agreements. And we're just started. We've been screening companies. We hope to add additions to this over the course of the next year. So this has been a real exciting start for this company. The true start happened many years ago while we were still at Bristol Myers, my colleagues and I, starting to look at this field, starting to develop these drugs and looking at the opportunities. Um, we started Salvarex in 2014. Just this year alone, we've re reviewed over 100 opportunities. Um, we launched the IOX in 2015. We've brought in significant collaborative research funding to enable those products to, to advance. We're advancing those products on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we've put together top-notch teams, both on the science and the governance board. We have a board of directors that include the ex-head of R&D at Pfizer, the ex-head of R&D at Merck Serono. We have business people, we have scientists, we have the right team in place to drive this process forward. We were able to list on AIM just a month ago. Since that time, we've had two major announcements this week. We raised additional funding during that placement that will fund the future growth. And as I said yesterday, we announced an acquisition, uh, uh, or, excuse me, an investment in intensity therapeutics. So you can see very rapidly we're delivering on our strategic plan. So if you step back a minute and look at, at, at what we've been able to do, if you invest in Salvarex, I think you have an opportunity to help millions of people who are suffering with cancer in a way where we're developing new treatments that are non-toxic and make a big impact on controlling disease. We can do that because we have an experienced team. Not only has our team developed the two leading blockbusters in this class, we've also developed numerous other products that are successful and making a huge impact for the treatment of cancer. This type of company is not usually 
available for the public investor. If you like intensity, you want to invest, it's a private company. You, the only way you can get exposure to these type of investments is through Salvarex. I hadn't had a chance to show you some of the comps of deals in this space. Our current market cap as of yesterday is 12 million. The types of license deals that companies with these products are, are, are signing are over a billion. So for a potential investor who comes in at this point, we're talking not a 2x return, a potential for a 50 or 100 fold return on investment. With that, I see I'm getting the hook. Please, if you have any questions, stop by our booth or come to see me. I'll be here all day. Thank you.